Local, late breaking. This is Channel 2 Action News. Coverage you can count on. Good evening, I'm Jackie Prager. Here in Buckhead, you can see the piles of trash behind me. The neighbors say have been here for over a week and they're becoming concerned that it's turning into a health issue. We're here at the Clayton County Police Department where investigators are looking into a series of home invasions targeting Asian Americans. One investigator tells me that the violence is escalating. Matt Jones says he was walking down this street when he saw two men behind him who came up, grabbed him and pushed him to the ground where they held a gun and took his belongings. It only took an hour for the men to come to this store where they broke a window and stole merchandise but left in minutes so that they could get away and hit two other stores that night. A cab driver's brother say he's in Grady Hospital because a heart problem flared up when he was arrested by mistake. And you can see the memorial site has grown and it was investigators who initially said it was Janelle Priester's fault for the accident that happened right over there on Highway 61. But a witness is now coming forward and saying that's not the case. They were side by side racing down 61. Kirsten Liberty was driving home Wednesday night and tells us she saw a Toyota Camry racing a Ford Mustang along Highway 61 just seconds before the Camry hit a turning car. Car that she hit um, flipped immediately and you could tell that there was there was going to be a fatality in that car. 18 year old Janelle Priester and 17 year old Nick Wright were in that turning car. Both died in the accident, but Janelle's younger brother and the driver of the Camry both survived with injuries. Over the weekend, a vigil was held at Paulding County High School so neighbors, friends and family could remember the high school sweethearts. Liberty says she felt the need to speak up when she heard investigators initially say it was Janelle at fault for the accident. I, I was absolutely horrified and felt like um, it, it really does a disservice to the children that lost their lives. Nick's father, William Wright, was cleaning up the memorial site where his son was killed. He didn't want to speak again, but says he's doing the best he can and is looking forward to hearing from investigators. Now, Nick's father is saying he doesn't think this intersection is safe and he wants to have a light put in place so that this does not happen again. In Paulding County, Jackie Prager, Channel 2, Action News. Here in Buckhead, you can see the piles of trash behind me. The neighbors say have been here for over a week and they're becoming concerned that it's turning into a health issue. Piles three, even four feet high of furniture, clothing and trash are sitting in the yard of this Buckhead home on Lookout Place. Neighbors are growing concerned. So from, a, from a public health perspective, clearly that's not sanitary. Ann Elizabeth King owned this home before it was foreclosed and she was evicted. And I had expressed that it was taking me a very long time because I'd been here 38 years. King says last Monday the eviction company came and put everything in her home on her front lawn. It's been like this ever since. I don't think that moving things to the outside is a license to destroy. The investment company who bought the property says they gave King plenty of notice that if she didn't move, they would evict her. They could see me walking back and forth loading things in the truck. The underlying issue neighbors are concerned about is who will clean it up. She could definitely use some help moving stuff. It's, it's obvious, but at the same time, I just don't know what's going on. This uh, situation has put her in us all as a community in a position where uh, now we have to deal with this. The investment company says that they are trying to clean this place up soon. And as for the elderly woman, she says she's still going through her belongings and is hoping to stay with friends. In Buckhead, Jackie Prager, Channel 2 Action News. We're here at the Clayton County Police Department where investigators are looking into a series of home invasions targeting Asian Americans. One investigator tells me that the violence is escalating. Um, they hit him and they used the gun to hit his head a lot. Clayton County Police Captain Wayne Gandy says an increasing amount of home invasions is putting business owners and executives at risk. We're talking about just 17 home invasions where uh, there have been increasing levels of violence. Noonan Police Detective Sergeant Chad Wood says the robbers usually target Asian American restaurant business owners or executives, following them home from work. I feel not safe in my house right now. The officers say 17 home invasions have happened between April 28th and Sunday night throughout Metro Atlanta. Investigators say the suspects are three or four males, typically dressed in masks and black hoodies. Although the victims are all of Asian descent, none of the robbers are. Wood says business owners should watch for anyone following them home and not hesitate to call 911. Just please, if you know anything about this call, 
because before somebody really gets hurt or killed, worse. Um, he said he really want other businessmen know that. It's very dangerous someone just follow you home, then do something to your family member. Investigators say they want to catch the suspects before anyone gets killed. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers Atlanta in Clayton County. Jackie Prager, Channel 2, Action News. Matt Jones says he was walking down this street when he saw two men behind him who came up, grabbed him, and pushed him to the ground where they held a gun and took his belongings. Just take what you need and go. That's what Matt Jones says he was thinking when he was robbed at gunpoint outside his apartment around 930 Wednesday night. I've seen crime spikes, but I've never seen it like it has been recently. Jones describes the suspects as clean cut teenagers who took his phone, wallet and keys, then ran off. Now he says he wants to warn others. I posted on Facebook, hey, watch out Midtown. It's, you know, it's getting dangerous out there. Jones ran to neighbor Lee Hall's house and told him to call 911. <laughs> came up and started knocking on my door and said, you know, I've just been robbed. Hall says that another neighbor in their complex was robbed at gunpoint just two days earlier. I can't walk my dog, you know, and feel safe at night, but, you know, hopefully something will get done soon. In response to the rise in crime, Atlanta police say they're increasing late night and early morning patrols. Last week, they made nine robbery related arrests. It, Midtown's supposed to be a very safe neighborhood. Jones says he's also on the Homeowners Association and says that they're looking into ways to get better street lighting. In Midtown, Jackie Prager, Channel 2, Action News.